Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here. I'm just going to have a few words about how can we digitalize a country like Monaco. So first, a few elements about uh, Monaco. I mean, Monaco is a wealthy country. We have four years of budget in advance, no debt. So even if we have no revenues, we can still live the same life for four years. It's the second smallest country in the world. It has 9,000 nationals, uh, 40,000 inhabitants, 50,000 additional people who come every day to work. So digitalism in Monaco is a double challenge. First, you have to do all the stuff from digitalize a country to a city to a village. And you have really to make sure that all of the aspects are taken into account. The second part is you have to make sure you digitalize Monaco and you not replicate Dubai or Singapore or another country. Because Monaco is very specific and trying to digitalize Monaco as if it was one of those countries would be a big misunderstanding. The Grimaldi family has been ruling over Monaco for 700 years. We have our history, our culture, we are Mediterranean, we have 9,000 nationals who are in the administration, we have 30,000 residents for 120 countries and majority of non-French speakers that use the administration. So there's a lot of complexity. So when I took that job, I was at Google before in California, the prince called me and he, he really gave me this mission telling me that I had to make sure that Monaco was entering uh, in the digital phase. Uh, we built a department. One, we have 110 people in the team. And it was very, very different from Google. So I tried to phase my mission in three phases. The first thing is the platforms. When you try to digitalize a country or a city or a village, First, it's all about the platforms, and the platform are double. You have, and this is very aligned with the day one theme, you have the technical platforms, like your telecom, which is my parameter, the tele Monaco Telecom, you have the satellites, you have the networks, and uh, for example, on telecom, we will be the first country next year to be fully 5G by uh, next September. So when you come back next year, hopefully you will be able to fully use 5G and to test it here. But you also need, when you do platforms, to build also on humans. And one of the major concepts concept of Monaco is about inclusivity. The tough thing on digitalization is never technology. So we are really trying to embark the, our entire population. We had Google to come at the beginning of the year to train our population. We trained 700 people on digital. We have a full plan to train our elderly people, our civil servants, to make sure they use digital. So first, the first bay we are building, we are building a national cloud, is really to build on platforms. But platforms by themselves have no value, except if you build services on them. So the second part is what, of thinking is what Monaco's objectives are. Monaco's, I think, have two main objectives. The first one is the quality of life, the very unique and best quality of life you have in the world, to make sure you attract the residents, to make sure you attract an elite that would come to live here. And the second is to make sure that we keep our growth and our economic development so that the future will look as good as the present. And this is really the two things I'm working on if you take out the technical aspects. So quality of life, it's pretty simple. It goes down to safety, it goes down to education, it goes down to health, and it goes down to your relationship with mobility and the administration. Um, we, made, we made a choice is that every single student who comes to Monaco has to be able to go anywhere else in the world. This is a strong statement because uh, in many countries, uh, education is either a cost or has to train for your own uh, system. When you're a student in a lycée in France, the vast majority of the people has to go to the university, the Grand École, and so on and so forth. Our approach is that now, every single student who come to Monaco should be able to go to Oxford, to Harvard, to Switzerland, etc. So starting next year, every student from three years old to 14 years old will learn coding, which means that every single student who comes to Monaco, every baby, would at least have 10 years of coding. So this is the promises we give. 
uh, and uh, for example, on education. A very difficult topic, and I'm sure you've experienced it to, uh, today, is mobility. The Monaco is very small. It doubles the population during the day. And uh, there's a lot of construction work from different places. Our vision on this topic is that we cannot master the externalities. So people come from France, uh, and we're not going to tell France what they do. Because, so, but what we can do, and where can digital can help, is really about uh, making sure that when people come in Monaco, they can leave their car either outside or inside in the parking and live their life in Monaco with a strong, soft mobility. <coughs> so we are really building an, an app that will be able next year to advise any Monaco citizen, tourist, uh, worker on the best mobility option from uh, the buses the autonomous vehicle that we want to launch, launch also end of next year, the bicycles, uh, the electric cars, etc., etc. So our vision Monaco in digital is really about um, having this soft mobility. But the most and the foremost, the important thing is about uh, the economy and how do we make sure that Monaco is going to again renew its business model. So there are many, many ways that we can uh, bring digital into the economy, and you are living proof of that, having you today and having you in our hotels. And uh, here is a great asset for Monaco. But I'm just going to give you an example, because time is running, is about the famous topic of blockchain. When you are a state, when the prince is really engaged on env environmental safety, what do you try to do with blockchain? What is true is that today blockchain is not the most mature technology and is not very, the usage is not very strong for voting, for mapping a city, because it takes a lot of energy. One transaction in blockchain takes as much energy as warming a swimming pool for a month. 60% of the blockchain capacity is in China, etc., etc. But still, what it could be the value for a country? The choice we are making with my colleague uh, Jean Castellini that you saw this morning in an introduction is that we think blockchain are a great opportunity to Uberize IPOs. Today, when you want to do an IPO, uh, you really have to be in a big city. You have to be in London, in New York. You have to pay Goldman Sachs and McKinsey amazing fees. And this only applies to a few settings of companies. When you are Monaco, or you are any given village or city, ICOs will give you the opportunities to make sure that you can attract capitals and companies. And our vision of that is that we should use, starting next year, ICOs to bring companies to Monaco that are fully aligned with the Prince's vision, which are on environment safety, on ethics and transparency, and that the companies that should do change for good and tech for good should come to Monaco, should be in Monaco, and should raise funds in Monaco. So one of the last things we're trying to do here is really to bring this blockchain technology into Monaco to make sure that it will be a good lever to bring corporate from all over the world who are aligned with our vision, are aligned with our ambition, to raise funds and to be based in Monaco. So in a nutshell, as there is just 20, uh, 20 seconds left, I would just like to thank you again for being here. Uh, I really hope you all come back next year, that you can see that Monaco is much more connected, that the bus shelters are new, that uh, kids you see in the streets are much smarter, and that uh, your company and your business will be uh, attracted by our new will to move further both by our connectivity and by our ambition to bring these companies who are doing good in the world in Monaco. Thank you so much.